This is how I think the scenario went. Uh, JJ calls you on the phone and you hang up and then you say what? <laughs> <laughs> I was surprised. I was actually shooting in Ventura and my phone rang and, and he said, JJ Abrams. And I, I was like, JJ Abrams? <laughs> How'd you find me in my hotel room? You know, so it was, it was, uh, we had a really great conversation and it was really, he just wanted to know if there was any engagement I had in, in, in Star Trek, you know? And, and it kind of brought back a lot of emotions that I hadn't even thought about for years. When you hang up that phone though, and you know that you've got this monster of a movie ahead of you, what's the first kind of real tactile thing you do? <laughs> I went and just grabbed a burger. <laughs> <laughs> but that was a good burger because I really had to think about if, if what is, why is the reason, what is the reason for the existence of this movie? Like, you know, I get that there's a commercial and there's a business reason, but that shouldn't be what's driving any of this. So, um, it, it really got me to a place where I thought, oh, it's 50 years. It's time to kind of like, let's try to deconstruct why uh, so certain philosophies that we've, 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 we've known of Star Trek. Let's deconstruct Star Trek, the Federation, everything. And hopefully by doing that through these characters, we'll be able to reaffirm why we love this franchise so much. And the fact that it is 50 years since the, the original, the TV show, does that weigh on you as a director? Not really. I mean, I my engagement with Star Trek started when I was eight years old, you know, and I watched it with my folks and my brothers, and it's a big part of our family, you know. And so the, the, the thing is you realize so much great storytelling's been done, not just in the feature, but in multiple mediums, you know, in TV. And, um, and so part of Star Trek is about these characters, and it's, it's, it's about these characters going through this shared experience and a sense of exploration, discovery. But also what's great about the Star Trek is that you need to be bold and try new things. So I felt like that was a worthy kind of, uh, with putting all those elements together, it was a worthy um, uh, uh, challenge to, to accept. And JJ is also one of the producers. Yep. Do you look at that, at that as like an added bonus, an added resource, or is that kind of pressure? No, I mean, uh, he, he's a filmmaker, so he's been nothing but gracious and generous. and. And, you know, I, look, I, I, I've been doing this enough to know that, you know, to have someone, a, a filmmaker of his stature, it was, it was, it was such a great uh, person to, to kind of bounce off stuff and to, you know, to, and he, 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 the way he goes about his business is the right way. It's, it's about respect and, um, and we just had a great time, you know. I, I, everybody on this, you know, when you watch this movie, you should stay for the credit roll because I've never been a part of something where everybody cares so much, you know, and, and down to every frame, there's so much care and love for this movie. I think when you watch a movie, you, you can feel that. And give me your take on, uh, since he's not here, on Idris Elba as Crawl. Well, you know, when I was thinking about deconstructing the Federation, I, I needed a character that really can embody a philosophy that really counters everything that we've known about Star Trek. And also, usually I knew enough that these movies, there's not a lot of real estate for that character, you know? And so for Idris to come in, he was my top, I felt like he was the only guy that can do it. And I remember talking to him and, and like he just jumped right in and he started building these characters together on our first conversation. And so, you know, I'm so grateful that, that he took on this challenge, you know, because I don't think there's anybody else in, in the world. You know, there's only a few people that could maybe pull that off. He was fantastic. You have to see it in IMAX. For sure, and I, look, I. They call me every time too to, to say, hey, when I did the fast movies, can we do 3D? Can we do? And I was like, no, absolutely not. No, 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 no. This one on IMAX and, and also 3D, you know, it, it was it was concerted effort aesthetically. I wanted to make sure that you know this is something that you can bring your friend, bring your family, and go see on the big screen. It's built for it. It's designed for it. Made in Hollywood. Hey guys, thank you for watching this video. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel, Made in Hollywood TV. Let us know what you think in the comment section below. And for the next awesome video, click right here. Click in that box right there, right there. Super easy.